allocated. And the next question is about this uh, wage subsidy program. How is it adjusted to uh, take into consideration uh, the particularities of the charities, as suggested by my colleague, Senator Omidvar from Toronto? I think she wrote to you about that. We, we found for the charitable sector, uh, first and foremost, that uh, they were going to be facing, in many cases, the same issues as other organizations, a significant decline in revenues. Uh, but it would be particular in the charitable sector in the sense that um, for some charities, they would be not losing money if they had government uh, sources of revenue, because that government source of revenue might not go away. Uh, but they would be losing all their donations. And for other charities, they might have government sources of revenue because governments might be actually paying their daily stipends, say for if you're in a, in a shelter or something. So what we decided to do for uh, those charitable organizations is to choose whether to include or not to include government revenues in their test for whether the revenue went down. So, for example, if you were in a situation where you had government revenue and you just had your donations go down and that government revenue was stable, you could not use the government revenue and just demonstrate donations went down. If you're in a situation where you had government revenue that went down because of your source, you could use it and show that that went down significantly. So, so we've given a double test for charities that puts them in a position, we think, to demonstrate their challenge. Uh, and then, of course, we've got specific supports for specific kinds of organizations, food banks, shelters, as you just mentioned, that are particularly challenged during this time. And, and we're going to continue to think about that, organizations that are effectively support mechanisms for people during this time. We need to find a way to ensure they have the resources they need. Thank you. 